We've always had the understanding of a diaspora and an Armenian homeland as two separate entities and we've always dealt with them as being two separate entities. Since independence there have been many efforts to bridge the divide, create a common understanding, um, physically bring people together, offer the betterment of the Armenian homeland. Being a birthright volunteer means a lot to me because it wouldn't be the same coming here and working without uh, the involvement of birthright. They're the reason that I can speak uh, better Armenian, read and write Armenian now. They're the reason that I met a lot of other Armenians, um, diasporans from different countries, and I've really missed that uh, in Denmark. did a little bit of researching and found out it's a once in a lifetime thing to do, you know, to come to Armenia, to work, to live, um, to breathe, and to try to be a part of Armenia. It's really an organization that allows the volunteer, allows the young diaspora to come here to have an effect and also to be affected. I often tell the volunteers that 90% of the effect that they're having on this country is indeed in seen. Um, they affect people through different and mostly indirect ways. So if they're working at a job site, um, the janitor will ask to someone else, who is that person who's, who's been here for the last month and uh, he's from another country, why is he here, why is he working? He's working for free? Why would, he, why would someone work for free? And the volunteer never hears about that conversation. But it makes people think as to why would someone come from across the world and, you know, and, and work in this country for free. The beauty of working at a job site isn't that they're just accomplishing a certain task. They're not working just nine to five and then going home. They're interacting with people. They're interacting with their um, Armenian uh, local counterparts and they get the opportunity to do things with them after work. So their mere presence at their job site gives them an opportunity to understand how their peers in this country function. I'm Elaine, I'm 25 years old. I'm from San Francisco, California. I've been working with the ABC since October, and now I teach English at the uh, Children's Center. So me and my coworker, who is from Armenia, try to get the kids to open up and not be shy in speaking English because generally they speak decent English, but they're afraid to use it. So we read and we write and we just have little conversations and groups just so that they become used to speaking. Okay, we have time for me to take off. Sophie couldn't see. Can you change the mask? Um, so I'm going to get the mask in my hand. Then we could pretend it all the time. Can you see that it's just raining? I'm running a podcast. I'm an animator. Nelly, from Bulgaria, France. Worte, I think, because film is Karen, Italian, France. I think has a lot of different genres. Because after this, I learn a lot of different genres. Ashkatmen, where people are carving on Anglican. Well, there has been a lot of progress in many of the kids because before I think they just were very shy. A lot of them are very shy, so they don't get a chance to use the English that they know. It's all book English. So they just, I think they feel more comfortable reading aloud, speaking.
one of the program services that we offer are our language classes that we offer specifically to our volunteers. And it is so heartening to see volunteers who came with no Armenian uh, speaking skills, no Armenian reading or writing skills, start speaking the language that they had never spoken, that sometimes even their parents hadn't spoken. And volunteers who may have spoken the language, not been able to read it or write it, all of a sudden, you know, pick up a book and start reading, be able to write their name in the language. It's the depth of the value of reclaiming uh, what they had lost is really very inspirational. I, I've seen many volunteers you know, go through the same process and every, every new volunteer that comes in and is successful uh, is inspiring to me even as a staff member. What I really liked about the Armenian classes was that I was involved in, in the process on how I was going to learn the Armenian letters and how to learn to read and write. Um, and the thing was that I decided that the best way was to learn the type letters first so I could be able to read the signs outside, which is quite important here. And afterwards I learned to write. And the reason was that I had an individual teacher um, who focused on the needs that I had and on the like difficulties that I had. <laughs> My family members gave examples of my dad because he grew up in Russia and when he was like 17 years old he came back to Armenia because he felt this is his country and so on. And he learned Armenian the same way. He was walking around the street trying to read the signs in Russian and Armenian and translating it. And now I'm doing exactly the same just from Russian and English to Armenian. And it makes me very, very happy about it. Just the physical part of being here and participating in this country's life itself is an impact, itself is an effect which is very important. And uh, conversely, this country's impact and effect on our individual volunteers is, is really uh, very um, magical. When I first arrived in Armenia, it was around 2 a.m. And when I finally came to the host family, um, they were sitting there at the porch, you know, with the, with the dog, and they were waiting there, and with this big smiles on their face, you know, and when I greeted them, um, when we greeted each other, it felt like I had already known them. if you want to get to know Armenia, if you want to be a part of Armenia, I think a homestay family is quite possibly the best way to do it. Their culture. Their mindset, the things that they've been through, it's amazing. The things, that I talk to Susanna and Azad all the time about, you know, what happened then, what's going on now, the changes. And there's just, you just can't do that if you're just going to come here and live by yourself in an apartment. You can't really understand. You can ask people on the streets, but not with the same passion, not with the same, not with the same open-heartedness as a host family could possibly do.
the magic of Bertha Arminia is that as we um, implement our program, we don't really manage experiences, we don't dictate experiences, we just give opportunities for young people to come here and have formed their own experience, formed their own understandings, do their own explorations. In America, I felt more Armenian than I did American. In Armenia now, I feel more American than I do Armenian. So, and slowly you start to reconnect, you start to grow those roots, and I think a whole family catalyzes that process. Knowing how to read and write Danish, English, Russian, it made me realize that I couldn't uh, read and write my mother tongue. And that's a very important fact in my life, and I'm really happy that I'm able to do that now. With a host family or without a host family, either way, I think if you're here long term or short term, you'll get a good taste of what's to come. And what I'm going to take from Azar and Susanna is that as far and as distant as or whatever small percentage Armenian you feel, they're going to make you feel it even more. Birthright Armenia is extremely proud to be part of this ongoing global process of building that two-way highway, of making the connections, of living the dream, one volunteer at a time, one young diaspora at a time. Impossible night and a cross.